Hi guys, back with another video tutorial brought to you by tastycheats.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this typographic composition in Adobe Photoshop. You may be wondering, why 500? Well, I've just reached 500 subscribers on my YouTube channel. For those of you that have already subscribed, I want to say a big thank you. These tutorials take a lot of work to make and I really appreciate your support. I can tell you this video would not have been made without your support and inspiration. And also, your kind comments and support really make me want to continue making these tutorials, so again, thank you. For those of you that have not yet subscribed, I welcome you to Tasty Tutes, and I hope you do subscribe and help me reach a thousand, or even more, because who knows what I'll do to celebrate. Well, to celebrate the 500 subscribers, I have made this tutorial just for you guys, so I hope you enjoy it. And if you're not aware of some of the techniques used, I hope you learn something. Okay, with that said, let's get into it. So what do we have here? We have a composition inspired by a designer called Brandon Mier. I'm not so sure on the pronunciation there, but if you're interested, I suggest you Google him. You'll be able to find the original piece online. So as you can see, there are a lot of textures and elements going on here. It might look complicated and busy, but fear not, I'm going to break it all down into some simple steps. If you wish to follow along with this tutorial, you can download the PDF at this point. This has all the information regarding this tutorial, including all the download links and the document Photoshop layer structure. This composition also has a lot of gritty texture and detail. Now, there are various ways to create this effect. Some might suggest using one of the provided gritty Photoshop brushes, or even go as far as to create your own brush. I'm going to leave that for another tutorial, but for this tutorial, I'm going to use various texture samples. I have open here a couple of documents which I want to show you first. Firstly, here is a document of simple lines and dots, and this gritty texture sample here. I actually prepared these especially for this tutorial, and you can download them for free in the PDF or in the description. And we are going to be using these textures throughout the tutorial to create the desired effect here you see in our main comp. So let's take a quick look at our Photoshop document here. I'm going to pull up my layers panel here. I'm just going to drop that down so we can see the layers. And we have four layer folders and they're named color textures, gritty texture, textures and shapes. Now let me toggle the visibility of these groups, these layer groups, and you can see how easy this is. Let's toggle the color textures so we can take them away. We've got the gritty textures, let's take that away. And then let's take away the textures. And you can, you can see how simple this image is before we start adding all the textures. And may I add that in all the, all the layer folders, as you can see when I drop these down, in them contain all the layers. And there's a lot of layers here, and there's a lot of elements. And um, I'll show you exactly how to manage all these and how all these are created. And then we're left with our simple background. So let's bring back all these layers and you can see how it adds to the finished image. So let's make a start. I'm going to create a new document. I'm going to press Command N and I'm going to come to my preset. And I'm going to choose International Paper and I'm going to go for A4 and I'm going to come to my resolution and change this to 150. Okay, that's currently portrait. I'm going to need to flip that around. So I'm going to come to Image image rotation and flip that 90 degrees clockwise and there we have it. Now I'm going to press command shift N to create a new layer. I'm going to call this background background and I'm going to come over to my menu and I'm just going to grab the paint packet and select a black color and quickly fill that and there we have our background. Now before we move on, I just want to quickly show you a quick scamp I did because before I went ahead and created the composition, I had to do a little think, I had to think about what it was I wanted to create. So I just did a little doodle. Here's my little scamp here. And this was my initial 
thought that I was going to compose the letters like this and engage the, the, the zeros like that. And then I was thinking about what colours I would use for the rings, etc. So I may be referring to this along the way. So back to our composition. We're going to start by creating the, the rings, the circles. Now a handy tip for this is we're going to start to use some guides. So I'm going to press Command R to bring up my rulers. And you can see that that has brought up my rulers around the side there. And I need to come to View. And if you don't already have it, if you look down here, we have this command here called Snap. We're going to need that ticked because this is going to really help us. So I'm going to start by dragging a guide from the far left over. And because we have Snap on, you can see this guide is snapping to the center of the canvas. So that's really helpful. And then we're going to do one from the top down. And we're going to allow that to snap into place. There you go. And there we have our center lines. Now if we come back to our scamp a little bit, I just want to talk about one quick thing. I want to create three circles, uh, three rings, an outer ring, a middle ring, and an inner ring. And it's not easy in Photoshop to create strokes or strokes on objects. So I want to show you a quick technique of how I got over this problem. Now first of all, um, I know how big my circles are going to be. So I'm going to come over to my menu and I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee tool. And as you're probably used to the, the marquee tool where you can make selections, if you look closely up above in the properties menu, you can see the style. Now I'm going to click on style and I'm going to go for a fixed size. Now, by default, it'll probably be 50 pixels by 50 centimeters or whatever it comes to your, you. But in this case, I'm going to go for 560 by 560 pixels. Now, make sure that's 560 pixels by 560 pixels. Okay. Now, what will happen when I click on my canvas, it will make a... 560 by 560 pixel selection. Okay, so there's no clicking and dragging anymore. It's it's a fixed size. Okay, so I can click anywhere on my canvas, and then if I move my mouse over the line, I will be able to move this anywhere on the canvas. Now, because we've got snap on, I can quickly snap it to the center of my canvas using those uh, guides I've created. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to drag some guides from the left and snap to my new selection. So I'm just going to do that very quickly from the side and from above. And there you go. Now I don't need that selection anymore so I can press Command D. So if I just zoom in a little bit, now you can see we have a square in the dead center. So let's start to make our circles or rings. I'm going to press Command Shift N to create a new layer and I'm going to call this Outer Yellow. Okay, now I'm going to come over to my menu and I'm going to pick the elliptical marquee tool. Right then, this is where the guides come into play. I'm going to move my mouse into the top left hand corner and I'm going to click and drag the circle marquee tool all the way down to the bottom right. And you can see, because we've got our guides and we've got snap on, our selection is going to snap straight and create a nice circle. So I'm going to leave go of that. And then I'm going to move my mouse cursor over onto the stroke and we can see our mouse pointer changing. I'm going to right click and come down to stroke. And then we're going to have a properties window that comes up. Now I'm going to change the width to 35 pixels I'm going to change my color to a yellow. Now I know my yellow color, so I'm just going to quickly type this in. Okay, click OK. And I want the location to be inside. Okay, inside, and the blending mode is going to be normal and the opacity will be 100%. And let's click OK. And you can see that we've created a single stroke. So I'm going to press Command D to deselect that. So we have a outer yellow ring. Now with this ring, let's zoom in slightly, we're going to create some new guides. So I'm going to pull a new guide in from the left, but I'm just going to align it so it's just touching the touching the side of the, the circle there. I'm going to quickly do this again. So we've got two new, two new guides 
on the inside of our circle. And then I'm going to quickly create a new layer, Command Shift N. And I'm going to call this Middle Blue. OK. Then I'm going to come over to my menu and grab the circle elliptical again. And I'm going to start with our new guides, top left, and drag down. And you'll see that we've now created a new selection, nice and neat, on the inside of our outer yellow. So I'm going to do the same again, move my mouse cursor over the, over the selection, right click, and hit stroke. This time I'm going, to keep, I'm going to keep the width the same as the outside stroke, and I'm going to change the color to a blue that I have here. Just going to type that in quickly. Got myself the blue there. And there we have a new in middle stroke. I'm going to press Command D to deselect. And we're going to do the same again. Command Shift N. This time I'm going to call this inner red. And before I draw the line, I need to create some new guides. So I'm just going to draw my guides in here. Draw these guides. And then come over to my grab my circle marquee tool and drag another one down. Got a nice selection. And again, right click and stroke. This time I'm going to change the color to a reddish color. Or a ready a red pink color. There it is. Okay. And deselect. Let's zoom out. And there we have are rings which are exactly the same width and they're all on their separate layer. So what I'm quickly going to do is in my layers panel I've got three rings here. I'm going to click on the top layer and holding shift I'm going to select on the, the third one below and press command G and that's going to group these layers together and I'm going to call this circle circle three. Okay. And there's a reason why I've called that circle three, because that is going to become our third circle, because if we look at our composition here, we're going to have three rings, three circles, and that the one that we just made is going to end up this one here on the far right. So let's come back to our main comp. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Now we can toggle the visibility of the guides. We don't need them anymore. They have proved their worth. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to create the three rings. So I'm going to select the circle three. I'm just going to move this over slightly. And I'm going to quickly duplicate this group. So with the entire group selected, I'm going to press Alt on the keyboard. And I'm just going to click and drag to the left here and I can duplicate this circle. Actually, at this point, I'm going to bring back my guides because I'll be able to place this circle in the middle. That's looking good, so let's get rid of the guides again. And I'm going to press Alt again on the keyboard and drag this to the left. There you go. You can see what's happening now. So in, the, in my um, layers panel here, I'm going to double click and call this one to the far left. Circle one and call this one circle two. So before we move on, let's just quickly reposition some of these. In Let's get these in place. So I'm gonna click on circle one, this one on the far left here. I'm just going to use the arrow keys just to maneuver it into place so we can see that we've got a little bit of space here, a little bit of space. And then I'm going to click on circle three and I'm going to move that into place, push that to the left a little bit, just get a little bit of room here, so we've got a nice little bit of space there, and that's looking quite nice. If we take a quick look at our scamp, we can see that in my initial thought, I wanted the three rings to have different color combinations. We can see that the one we just created has a yellow, blue, red, but this one has a red, yellow, blue, etc, etc. So if I come back to my comp, when I duplicated the first group, we can see that the color combinations are the same. So now, essentially, I'm going to have to change the colors of these. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start with this one in the center. So we can get rid of circle one and circle three, so we can pay attention to this. 
if we come over to our layers panel we can drop down our circle too and I'm going to start with the, the top one here if you can see that's the inner red I'm just going to double click on this on this layer and I'm actually going to just choose a color overlay and I'm going to change the color to the blue so I'm just going to quickly change this to our blue and there it is and the same and the same applies to the other ring so I'm just going to go for a simple color overlay change this to our yellow okay and again to the outer color let's change this to our red and there it is now if we want to be uh, quite pedantic about this, we should probably go ahead and rename the layers so we are aware of them. So this will now become middle yellow and inner blue. Okay, and let's bring back circle one. And I'm quickly going to just change the order of this. So here we have the three rings now complete with their proper color sequence. Next, we are going to create some additional shapes to complete the letter 500. So we're just going to zoom out a little bit, and I'm going to press Command-Shift-N to create a new layer. I'm going to call this Black Square, and I'm going to come over to my menu and select the Rectangular Marker tool. Now, if we remember earlier on, if we come to the top, we change the style to Fixed Shape. I want to bring this back to normal so I've got the flexibility I want. Okay, so I'm just going to draw an area of roughly about that size and I'm going to grab my paint bucket and just grab a black and fill that. Press Command D. I'm just going to toggle the position of this. So as you can see, we are chopping into this circle simply by using a black layer. It's really, really quite simple simple as that. Okay, I'm going to press Command Shift N and I'm going to just call this blue strip one. Okay, and I'm going to grab my marquee tool again and I'm just going to click and drag and get um, quite a, a tall selection here. And I'm just going to grab my color picker tool and just select a blue that I've got from there and grab the paint bucket and just fill that. Command D to deselect. This time I'm going to grab my my lasso tool, the, the one in the middle there. I'm just going to press and hold shift. I'm just going to click once and because I've got shift selected it's going to do a 45 degree um, move uh, selection down here. So there you go. Got a selection. I'm just going to press delete and command D. So what I've got is I've got a, a, a unique shape here that has got a cut on the top there. So let's put that back into place and press V to pull up my move tool. I'm going to quickly duplicate this shape. So I'm going to press Alt on the keyboard and just click and drag. So there you have it, I've quickly duplicated that. And press Command T to pull up free transform, and I'm just going to rotate this round. And if again, if I hold Shift on the keyboard, I'm going to be able to do. I'm going to be able to snap, snap that to a nice 90 degree angle. Let's press Enter there. I'm just going to move this up, and I'd like this to be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to press Command T and just pull this down ever so slightly, and press Enter, and I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool and just make a little selection and just delete that. So I've just trimmed that shape there. And if I come into my layers panel, I'm just going to rename this to blue strip two. So now we've got three new layers. We've got the, the black square, the blue strip one and blue strip two. With the top layer selected, I'm gonna press shift and select the bottom layer. Press command G to group these. And I'm going to call this group blocks. So now those three new items are arranged in a group. So here we have the letter 500. And that's looking a bit too far up in the canvas. So I'm going to 
come over to my layers panel and by holding shift I'm going to select all the groups and I'm just going to move this letter down into the middle of the canvas here. That's looking a lot better. Right, so that's our text composition complete. If we look at the scamp again, you can see that I wanted to cut certain parts of the rings away to reveal the black background. To do this is quite simple, and we're not actually going to delete anything. We're just going to add some more detail just to create the illusion. So we're going to start with the middle ring here, and I'm going to start with the outer ring. So I'm literally going to put my mouse over the red outer ring, and I'm going to right click. And by doing that, we're going to pull up a quick menu of the layers underneath the selection. And this is going to make it really easy to quickly navigate straight to that layer. So if we look here, we've got circle two outer ring. So if I click that, we look in our layers panel, that's taking me right to that ring. But all I'm going to do is right click and duplicate this layer. I'm just going to call this black circle. And we're going to click OK. And with that, I'm going to double click and I'm going to come to color overlay. I'm just going to select a black. Now I could either select a black from the color here or I could just move my mouse cursor onto the canvas and it'll become a color picker and let's just ch choose the same color as the black background. Okay. And if we come to our scamp, we can see exactly where we want to to reveal that black ring. So I'm going to come back into my main comp, zoom in a little bit. I can just grab my lasso tool I can just make a selection like so. I can move down a little and just click around. If I press delete, and zoom out, and press command D to deselect, you can see that now we have that black ring. So I didn't essentially delete anything from this. I could have done that, but I just want to. I might change my mind later on and it's safer to just add in, instead of delete, in my opinion. So here we go, we've got our black circle. But be now what I'm going to do is, before I go ahead and do the rest, I'm going to click, come to the layers panel and find this, this black circle. I'm just going to move it, I'm just going to move it up and move the layer out of the, the circle folder. Because what I'm going to end up with is a folder of its own with just the, the black circle parts. Okay, so let's have a look again at our scamp. And this time we're going to do this one on the inside, on the outer yellow ring. So again, I'm going to right click on the outer yellow. I'm going to make sure I've got that layer selected, yes. And right click, duplicate layer. I'm just going to call this black ring. And double click, color overlay. Let's choose the black. Okay, and then we should come to our layers panel and grab that black ring layer and move it up out of the circle folder. And then you'll see that because we've dragged it on top, we can now see that it's come above all the rest of the layers. So if we zoom in, we can get our lasso tool and we can just make a selection like so. And just move around. And there you go. Press delete, zoom out, deselect. So now we've got that new black ring section. Let's do it again. So what we're going to do next, we've got this one on the inside. Okay. Where was it again? On the middle. Press a V to pull up my selection tool or move tool. Right click on the middle yellow layer. Right click, duplicate layer. Let's call this black ring. Okay. Double click, color overlay. Let's click on the color and choose the black. And let's move this one up again, up and out of the circle ring folder. And this time we're going to make a selection there and there. Let's double check, check that's fine. Yep. And press delete and command D to deselect. And there is our third black ring. Now, if I come back to my scamp, we can see 
that we have another black ring, but this time it's not a color overlay of one of the current rings. It's actually a ring on the outside. So how are we going to go about creating that? So if I come back to my main comp, we need to create in now a black ring to come around the outside of this outer red ring here. We could do that quite simply. If I just, I can toggle the visibility of all the layers on, on my comp. So I can pay attention to what I'm about to do next. I can bring back my, my guides from earlier on because these are still to, to scale. I can come over and grab my circular elliptical marquee tool. I'm just going to do what I did, the same as I did earlier on, click and drag and create a circle selection. Then I'm going to press Command Shift N and create a new layer. And I'm making sure that I'm creating it in above the other black rings so they'll be together. I'm just going to call this black ring. OK. And I'm going to move my mouse pointer over the selection. I'm going to right click and come to stroke. I'm going to create the stroke the same width as previously, 35 pixels. I'm going to choose the color and make it black. OK. But this time, the location won't be on the inside and it's not going to be on the center, it's going to be on the outside. So when I click on the outside, it's going to stroke. It's going to stroke on the outside of my selection. So if I click OK, so we and press Command D. We can't see it yet because of course it's black. So let's bring back all our other all our other layers here. And let's get rid of those guides so we can see clearly here. Now if I come to my layers panel and grab this black ring and move it down into place, you can see that it snaps snugly to the out, outer red ring, which is exactly where we want it. And if we look at the scamp, we want this black ring to just come around here and around the outside, mainly just chop away at that ring there. Okay, back to our main comp. Let's grab our lasso tool and make a selection. I can just make a selection there and there. Press delete, command D. And there are our black rings. Finally, I'm going to come to my layers panel, grab the top black ring. By holding shift, select the bottom layer, command G. And we're going to name this folder black rings. And let's come back to our scamp again. And we can see that we've now achieved all the rings and the black rings, but now we have two last things to think about. We've got a yellow fill in the middle and a blue fill. And these are the last things we're going to do to complete the 500 text comp. Let's come back to our main composition here. I'm just going to grab the lasso tool and make a selection. I'm going to create the yellow background here. Double click. I'm going to grab my color picker and select that yellow. Make a new layer, Command Shift N. I'm just going to call this yellow back. OK. And I'm going to come over and grab my paint bucket and fill that. Command D. Now you can see that that's on top of everything. So if I come to my layers panel, I can drag this all the way down underneath everything else. And there it appears. And we can see now that we've got our black cutout ring there. But on this occasion, I'm not going to go ahead with the blue fill. Even though I thought about it earlier on, I'm just going to keep the yellow fill. So the last thing I'm going to do now before we move on is select everything in our layers panel. All the layers, all the group folders that create this composition here. By sh pressing shift, I can select them all and command G to group. I'm just going to call this folder 500 text comp. And that is the hardest part of the tutorial. I know there was a few tricky techniques in there and lots of layers, but you will soon see that creating it this way will make it really easy for what we are about to do next. Now we can move on to the fun part and start adding all our textures. So let's come over to our textures document. And as you can see, as I demonstrated earlier, we are going to be using a bunch of textures which I created earlier on. And you can download these in the, in the description or the PDF provided for free. And if we look in the layers panel, I've, I've organized all these and I've called them all their names such as big dots, small dots, thick lines, two lines, medium lines, thin lines, etc, etc. 
And all we're going to do is we are going to, we can right click and choose these layers. And we're just going to simply drag these samples into our composition here. If I drag them in and, and let go, you can see that now we've got this layer on top. And it's a simple case of choosing where we're going to, to place these. So I'm going to start from the right and make my way over to the left. All right then, so let's place our texture completely over the, the ring circles here. And I'm going to right click like we did earlier, but this time I'm going to choose the outer yellow, the outer yellow ring, okay? And then I'm going to grab my magic wand tool I'm going to select the area of our outer yellow ring and then I'm going to come up to my black dots texture so with the big dots selected and the selection of the yellow outer ring I'm going to come down to my the bottom of my layers panel and the third icon from the left we have add layer mask so if I click that once we can see what happens so you can see that now we have applied a layer mask to the, the big dot texture. So we didn't delete anything, we just created a layer mask. But what we have here is some of the dots here. Because we selected the entire ring, all I want is the big dots to be on top of the outer yellow ring. So if we come over to my layers panel, we can see two icons on this layer. We have an icon which represents the layer mask and we have an icon which represents the actual layer. And we haven't deleted anything, we've just added the layer mask. So I'm going to select on, select on the icon that represents the layer mask and I'm going to come over to my menu and I'm going to select a brush. And I'm going to make sure that I have a black color selected. Okay. And then I'm going to come over and I'm just going to draw on top here. So it, it, it appears that I'm deleting, but I'm not actually deleting. I'm just adding black to the layer mask, which is going to hide that part of the main layer, those dots there. And I'm going to do this here as well on the bottom. So now we can see that all we have are the black dots on the outer ring of that yellow ring there. So let's do this process again. Come back to our textures document. But this time I'm going to select the small dots, the small dots, and I'm going to drag this texture into our comp here. I'm going to place this over, over the ring. This time I'm going to right click and select the middle blue ring and press W to pull up my lasso tool and let's select the area of that blue ring. Come back up to my small dots texture come down to the bottom of my layers panel and click on the add layer mask and you can see we've done that again I'm going to click on the layer mask icon and press B to pull up my brush which is black again and I'm going to just draw on top and add some black so it appears we're deleting these black dots because all I want are the black dots to be on this part of the selection just carefully remove there and that's looking just fine so let's come back to our textures again and this time I'm going to choose my thick lines and press V to pull up my move tool so I can move these into my composition here I can move this and we're good now we're going to start adding some textures to the the middle rings so I'm going to start with by right clicking on the outer red, press W, select the area, come back up to my thick lines texture and apply the layer mask. And again, I want to get rid of some of this detail, so I'm going to press B with my black paintbrush and just erase or get rid of some of that line detail there. So we've just got, got it on the top and bottom. Okay, and again, I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab my medium lines, drag this into my main comp, but we're gonna do something a little bit different this time. 
Let's drag them in there. This time, I want to make them yellow. I want to make these lines yellow. So I'm going to double click on the layer. I'm going to come to Overlay. I'm going to choose a yellow. OK, so now we've got these yellow lines. But these this time, I want to put these yellow lines on one of the black ring selections. So if I move my mouse over this black ring here on the on the outer red, I can right click. I'm going to select a black circle. And I'm going to press W to grab my magic wand and click on the black ring. So now you can see we've got that black ring selection. I'm going to do the same, come to my my lines there and apply the opacity mask. Now, now you can see the significance of creating the black ring as an actual object because that helped us or it enabled us to grab that selection to add the layer mask. Okay, so now I believe you're aware of how we add in the textures and apply the opacity masks. To save time, I'm going to quickly add the rest of the texture to the rest of this composition here. Okay, so now we have all our textures applied. Now we find ourselves with lots of layers in the layers panel here that we've just created. So let's tidy this up. I'm going to select the top layer, press shift and select my bottom texture and press command G. It's going to group this and call this textures. So let's drop that. So now we have our textures all neat in one folder on top of our 500 text composition. And now we are going to move on and start to add some gritty texture. So if we come over to another document here, uh, this is the Texture 2 document, which again you can download for free. And this time we have some gritty texture. If we look in the layers panel, we have two layers. This black gritty texture is on a layer of its own and it's on a transparent layer. So this is going to be really easy for us to make some selections and drag these into our comp, just like we did with the other textures. We're going to do the same with these, but we're not going to use any um, opacity masks or layer masks this time. So let's start by making a selection. So we could just grab some of this gritty texture here by making a selection. And let's make sure we've got layer selected. And let's press com Command C to copy. Let's come back to our main comp and press Command V to paste. So here we have our some gritty texture there. And th it's just a case of moving this around where we want. And we want to get a nice, a nice effect that you know this text is be the the shape is being eaten into. So we can just use our own discretion here. And I might press Command T just to rotate this and just move it in there a little bit. And that's looking nice. And a really nifty trick to duplicate this is to press Alt on the keyboard and just click and drag. And we can duplicate this a little bit and just move it around and get some more gritty texture there. Let's come back to our gritty texture comp. Press and grab our lasso tool and make another selection. Let's grab this big this big bit down here. It's looking quite nice. Command C to copy and Command V to paste. And I can just move this, let's move this around. I can move this around. If I press Command T, I can just make it a bit thinner and rotate it a little. Press Enter. I can just Move this around and see where it looks good. It's looking quite, it's looking quite cool. Again, pressing Alt on the keyboard, and click and drag. We can just make a selection of this. Just drag it down here. Command T. Maybe let's make this a little bit smaller. By pressing Shift, I can do a nice scale. Let's move this around a little. Just enter. Put that into place. Let's come back into our gritty textures. Grab the lasso tool, let's make another selection. Let's try this little bit here. Command C to copy, 
Command V to paste. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. V to put my move tool. I can just move this around, maybe change the size a little. Move this around. And we can duplicate like we did earlier on, just duplicate these layers by holding Alt, clicking, dragging. And we could we could take a little bit of time just to try and build up some really gritty texture. And it can take a while to get this one right. Um, let's come in and grab some more. Grab some more. Let's try let's grab my little suit tool. Maybe try some of some of this over here. Copy, paste. Let's try working over here. Let's blow that up. And again, also what we can do if we want, if we want to get rid of some of this, we can come to our razor tool, for example, and we can choose a gritty brush and maybe make sure that the opacity is 100%. And we can just maybe delete a bit of texture away from that at our discretion. So yeah, you can see it, it could take a while. Um, if we come back to our textures. It's just a case of choosing some of the interesting gritty gritty elements, copying them, pasting them on, just dragging them around and placing them on top of our top of our text, just how we like it. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and do a bit more of this. So after a bit of time, adding, scaling and repositioning the gritty texture, you will have something that looks like this. And if we look in our layers panel, you can see that now we have an awful lot of layers here that we have just created. So let's quickly group all of these. I'm going to call this group gritty texture, gritty textures. So the idea here with the gritty texture is to take away the clean edges that we created earlier on. So just toggle invisibility, you can see before and after. So we focused the gritty texture on some of the edges here where we can see where the black meets the color and on the, the hard edges. We have applied the gritty texture just to break it up and give it that effect of gritty destruction. Now we are going to move on to the final part of this tutorial and finish off with the color textures. Okay, now the process of this is very similar to the gritty textures. We're going to be using this um, texture sample again. But this time we're going to select some of the bigger parts. So let's go with this part here. Just going to select around here. And we're going to copy and we're going to paste. Let's start from the right to left again. So now we have this area of black. This time I'm going to double click on the layer. I'm going to come to color overlay. And I'm going to select the yellow color. Okay. And I'm going to move it into a position I'm happy with. Let's try this position here. And could just change the scale and rotate it around if I wish. Press enter. But I'm not really liking this hard edge, so again I'm going to come over and grab my eraser tool and grab a gritty brush. But I'm going to change the mode to pencil. I'm going to toggle the brush size. This is just going to make a really hard delete there. You could see it's deleting it nice there. So there's one part. And what we can do here is we can duplicate this. So by pressing Alt, we can click and drag, drag it up there, pressing Command T, free transform and rotate this up and change the scale, move this into place, and we can change this to color overlay, we can change this to that pinky red there. Let's just move this down a little bit. So let's zoom in here. See, we've got some nice texture going on there. And if we want to add just some really small minor details, we can come back into our gritty texture, zoom in. And maybe we might want to just select some of the smaller speckles, some of the smaller ink splats. Let's copy that and paste it on. 
and come to double click on that layer, color overlay, let's choose the red there, and we can just move this into place. So we've got some really subtle ink splats. We can just duplicate these around, maybe just put them over the yellow a little bit there, give it a sense of quite a big explosion. Let's move that around again. <clears throat> And then we could even bring these down by pressing Alt on the keyboard, clicking and dragging. We could bring these down, double click on the layer, change this to the yellow. So we're just adding some of these minor splats here. So look at that. Just to add to the effect. Okay, so by right clicking, I can select. This layer here, Oops, I selected some of the gritty by accident. Let's right click, there we go, layer six, copy, there you go. Let's put that back in place. We can duplicate this also. Let's bring that over. Command T, rotate that. Let's put this over. Let's change that color to our blue. It's looking cool. And back to our textures, zoom out, maybe we can select another part, copy, paste, Just put, click on that, color overlay, change it to red, let's rotate that, bring it down here, let's make that one quite wide, Maybe even come to edit, transform, flip horizontal. So we've got that blast out in that direction. So you get the idea. We're just going to carry on. Get the eraser tool, maybe delete a bit of this away. We're just going to use all these textures just to build up some nice color effects, just like we did with the gritty texture. After a while, you should have something that looks like this. We have added a lot more excitement to the image now with our color textures. Let's take a closer look. So now you can see we have some colors overlapping each other. Just we've got some colors overlapping each other there with some nice ink splats. And you could spend a bit more time and make it look a little bit more bit more refined, make it a bit more exciting. But for the sake of this tutorial, I have just taken it this far, just to demonstrate to you what exactly we can do to achieve this effect. Now, in the layers panel, we can see now we've got an awful lot of layers that we've just created for all our colors. So I'm going to neaten all this up by selecting all these layers, by holding Shift, select all these layers, Command G to group, to group those layers. I'm gonna call this folder color textures and the very last thing we're going to do just to finish off this whole entire composition is come back to our background layer I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to click on stroke and I'm going to do the size of 20 and the position is going to be inside and I'm going to change the color to our yellow there so we have a nice outside stroke to frame our image and there is the finished graphic typography in Adobe Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you're interested, hop over to my website at tastytudes.com where you can see more videos. And from there, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook where I'll be talking about various other creative topics and keeping you up to date on new video releases. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for subscribing and supporting this channel. So have fun guys, and I'll see you next time.